Ronaldo. We need to escape that. Um, a couple announcements before I start the review of the M5As. Uh, first announcement, thank you for Linsole for sponsoring this video. Linsole, wait, I have a remote. I have a remote that looks like a keyboard. Here it is. Linsole uh, currently has, I think, 60 items on sale. And they're your number one stop for basically anything portable audio. You've got IMs out the ass. That's right, I'll say that in an ads read. You can't stop me. Um, tube amps, actually there's some headphones here. No speakers. That's one of the things. It's like Linsoul has all this covered. All every all the Baldars are there, the Freyas, the Nanas there, where are they? All the X duo items. And they've usually got pretty good sales going on all the time. And they've got even like look at this, is a judge me reviews thing, which will show you all the reviews from the, the whole website, which is kind of nice. So yeah, Linsoul. Um feeding this channel a lot of the things we reviews and the audiophile community with decent sales. The uh specifically, hold on. Scrolling through things before we, yes. Seven Hertz Timeless, uh, 200 bucks currently on sale, $20 off. So that's good. So that's number one. Number one is that. Number two, um, there's gonna be a mega yard sale come August, either August 1st or 2nd, whenever that video comes out, because I'm just gonna clear out a bunch of stuff. I'm talking big speakers, headphones I don't use. It's, it's probably usually the yard sales are between 10 and 12 items. This is gonna be 25 items at least and big ones. So if you don't usually give a shit about yard sales, this might be the one to care about. August 2022, in case someone's watching this in the far, far, far future. And lastly, and this one's probably the most important thing, um, Uh, did you know that there's a plugin for FUBAR that let it play videos? So I actually have every anime music video I've ever downloaded, and I, yeah, I'm one of those guys. But I have a, a, a list now, and look, it plays in the corner, transparently. It's a wonderful edit, and that's a wonderful remix of Toxic. Just, I don't know what's going on. Anyway, so yeah, there's an MPV plugin for FUBAR. I'll link that plugin in the description. And I might do a full, I've been doing software reviews in the second channel. If you don't know about the second channel, it's just a place for me to do anything because who gives a shit? Nearly 10,000 subscribers. And I'll probably do a re-review of FUBAR. I had one on this channel a long time ago and a lot's changed apparently. A lot has changed. I'm using an alternative uh, replay gain and things. So it's it's fun. Let's get out of the anime music videos because I had to test these speakers again and we got to tell a little story. Um... <laughs> This is good reminiscing music. These are the Swan M5As, and they're currently $1,700. So one gemstone in the title, Zeus. They're an eight inch version of the M3As. The M3As and the M3A Mark IIs are a six inch with a soft dome, mid range, and a tweeter like this. And this is a brand new speaker. They hadn't had this previous. This isn't like the, uh, M300 Mark IIs, where the M300 Mark Ones are hanging in my side channels. These are all new. And I've already done a review of them. I finished it. I was disappointed. In fact, if you want to watch that review, that's in the description of this video. It'll remain unlisted. Because some shit has gone down with these speakers. And I have to just begin. There was a nice 02 wallpaper. I, I, I used a 02 wallpaper on the last review of these speakers because it was looked good on paper didn't perform well. If you haven't watched that show, Darling on the Franks, if you have watched it, you understand exactly what I'm talking about. But if you haven't, <laughs> enjoy your Zero Two wallpaper. This wallpaper, much better. Pointing at the album art. So these are the biggest swans I've ever reviewed. Physically, as well as emotionally. Because the only speaker I was looking more forward to than these was the Bucard A700s. And these redefined what I thought was possible with sound in general. I've got some of the covers mixed up. These are a lighter gray than that. I'll fix it. Um, and these were like the only thing I thought could compete. Because when we were talking about the Swan M300 Mark II's being literally priced to performance best speaker available, the only speaker, bookshelf size speaker, that beat the M300 Mark II's was the Pucart A500s, which are $4,500 with the control box. And those are 900. 
I will link those, by the way, in the description. I'll link the boot carts in the description. I'll link those in the description because represent. But now, so these came out and those kind of were at least as good for way less money. So now these came out and these are like $6,700 worth the control box. So my hope was I would turn to the Swan M5As with the eight inch and the 75 millimeter mid-range high vi dome and then the biggest goddamn panel like like it's the size of the remote control the biggest panel tweeter and i would think they would compete with the a700s or at least give me a sense of like all right these are for big boy competition and when i first reviewed it it didn't work it didn't work i didn't like them go watch the original review i'm not going to repeat myself here all you have to know is i figured it out when i came here to do the sound demo yesterday i've given myself a full 20 hours, probably nine of those listening, re-listening to these to give you a real review. Um, I was using the digital inputs on these speakers. These speakers have the exact same back panel as these. So I'll remove these, they're nice and light. Oh God. They're not by the way, in case you're wondering why the struggle sounds are happening. Oh, there's a remote in the back. Please don't destroy the speakers. I'm putting it on the grills. Okay. so. Here's what the back of that speaker looks like. The old M3As, the ones that I purchased for $1,200, which are fantastic speakers, have individual 100 and 100 watt, 110 watt uh, amplifiers in each side, and you move your whole things up to one, and it has a signal cable to the other, and it individually amps and powers, and individually amps and powers. The M5As don't use that same system. They use this exact panel, and according to one guy on an Amazon review, and I haven't verified this, this panel, which feeds using a six pin from that side to this side, has a total of like 500 watts, 120 or 180 per eight inch, and then like another 70 or 40. It's like 40 watts, 40 watts, 180 watts times two. And I'm just like, my brain is, huh? Because that's a lot. Did you hear my air conditioner start up? We won't have to do that once I'm fully sponsored by uh, Mini Splits from Pioneer. That's a sponsorship video that's coming up too. Um, so now it's a single sided amp. You run a custom six channel wire that screws in. This is the blank. Can I lean this without destroying the world? Um, these weigh 47 pounds each, by the way, and they are, like, they're an MDF box surrounded by actual hardwood. The, I mean, I don't have to describe the looks to you, because you just, well, you can see them. That's the one thing this channel never has to really get involved with, It's just like, go to the purchase page, look at them. All you don't get from that is the scale. Six and a half inch, pretty big boot cart, that. Klipsch RF7s. These are wider than RF7s and weigh about half as much because they're half the height of an RF7. So there's some shit going down here as far as scaling. The back panel includes just an input volume digital knob, your bass and treble knobs, which if you remember the M300 reviews, the M300 Mark II, I maxed them both out and it unlocked the magic. Not the same on these, although I am going to turn them up just a little bit. Just, just like like here, like give them, give them that three o'clock little, little, little bump of low end and, and treble because it's not just boosting bass and boosting treble, it's changing the DSP. We're getting to the problem I had with the last speakers and why I think I fixed it, but now I'm a little bit confused. Um, wireless LAN, it actually has a uh, Wi-Fi, but it's weird because the app is like connected to your phone. Then you never give it your current Wi-Fi for your house, so it doesn't appear anywhere but on your phone. And I'm, I went through the manual and it's very short. It's like, connected to your phone. The end. So you can plug it in to a Cat5 or Cat6 or RJ45, whatever you want to call it, and have it appear on your network. But wirelessly, it doesn't appear to do that. It's kind of strange. You have your two digital inputs, your optical and your coaxial digital. You have our, uh, auxiliary RCAs and you have your balanced inputs. And you have power, your other connector and on off. I will say it again, Swan is slightly behind on the feature set. Like the Wi-Fi thing not working is like, all right, but like the Canto Tux 
the Vamatu T1 Encores. Those are roughly five to eight hundred dollar like powered monitors. Even the triangles, do they have this option? I'm not sure if the triangles do, but things like the ability to move your powered speaker, the speaker that you have to have, this will literally says left out, which means that has to be your left speaker. If you're using the analog inputs, you can just reverse the XLRs or RCAs, but if you're gonna use the digital inputs or the Bluetooth, you're gonna have to have the powered one be on the right. It's one of those features I'd love to see them just make it so there's a switch. This speaker is left, this speaker is right. And then it could just place it wherever, because maybe, Maybe over there is inconvenient with all these plugs. Maybe I want the powered speaker there. They don't have that ability. Where are the covers for these? I was so kerfuffled. This is one of the only Swan speakers that actually looks better with the covers off. Covers on is sort of required on the M300s. They just don't, they don't appeal. Oh God, these are mildly heavy too. That looks sexy. You could see them through the grill and you take it off and it's kind of like, Meh. I could give or take with it. Actually, we need to talk about that. Let me put it down on the couch. You sit here for a second. Um, M500s. So there's the M3As. Those are my old set. Then they made M3A Mark IIs. Then they made these M5As. But, well, actually, the M, these are actually all the drivers from the uh, M3As. We had the tweeter, the soft dome, and the six and a half inch with the real face plug. And these are the DIY 3.1s, which was the exact same driver setup in a generic box that you built, and it was like a $300 kit. Currently has my rear channels in this area, and oh my God, is that overkill for rear channels. So the bigger version of these speakers, the M500s, took the six and a half, made it an eight, and kept these exact same size tweeter and mid-range, a little tiny one two inches across. And that was a problem because the M500s, while as great as the 300 sounded, the M500s were too shouty because you had to balance a brand new giant eight inch driver with the exact same mid-range and tweeter that you had in the smaller version. So as this one is perfectly balanced and what I could consider like one of the best sounding speakers ever, the M500 ended up in my home theater as a center channel because it was just too much. You had to back 30 feet away from it before you could enjoy it. So one of the things I really like about the concept of the M5As here is they've taken that tweeter mid-range array and they blew it the fuck up to match the eight inch. So now that there's nothing small here trying to struggle, it's like, all right, I got this and I got this. Still has a little bit of a problem being real close. I had them set up here. I've, I started drawing lines in the floor so I can know I'm 10 inches away, 20 inches away, 30 inches away. Not centimeters, sorry guys. And when I came down today to start my listening today, I moved them as far back as I could. If I could pull those, those towers out easily and just shove them all the way against the wall, I would do it. If I could take these support beams down and shove this whole couch back another two feet, I would do it. Because no matter how well you tune a speaker, with this much power and just fascia, it's gonna throw. Like the Bucarts were able to just like perfectly, they're, they're a lot more money and a lot more DSP going on, especially when you could load the different profiles. This is sort of like, well, I haven't played music in like 30 seconds. Wait, where's my pants? I found my pants. David Chesney. All right, that is so fucking loud, I need to lower it. Uh, here's a remote, by the way. Power mute, auxiliary balanced, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, optical and coaxial. All right, so let me really quickly go over the problem I was having. Um, I was listening to them upstairs in the sunroom. In fact, the other review starts in the sunroom where I use them for about two, three weeks, fiber optic input. Because I know they're a DSP corrected speaker. Why would you feed an analog signal in just so it has to reconvert that analog to digital to do the DSP correction for all the drivers and then back to analog through their DAC? Just feed it pure digital, cut that step out. Well, that's how I was judging them entirely for the previous review. I never bothered to hook up a DAC. So I grabbed the Denif, actually I had the D70S during a live stream. I was setting these speakers up for the sound demo. And I'm like, you know what, for the sound demo, I'm gonna take the extra steps and I'm just gonna plug in a DAC just to see, cause I had the DAC out to run the topping LA90. I'm just gonna plug, plug these speakers in analog 
just to see maybe it'll help. Because I gave these speakers a shit review. Not like they're garbage, but like I don't prefer them and they're kind of annoying to listen to and I don't want to hear them. That was the problem. That's the other review that's linked in the description. I didn't like the fucking flagship Swan self-powered speakers. Didn't like them. It broke my fucking heart. And I was like, I should have tried this before I made the review, but I was just so sad. So I plugged the D70S into it and I'm setting up for the sound demo. I got the microphones out and the they're still out. And all of a sudden I, I turned them on to like adjust levels and I'm like, wait a second. These aren't annoying me at all. What? What? So during a live stream, I live stream on Twitch, by the way, Wednesdays and Sundays, usually just walking around with the head cam. It's, it's pretty fun. Um, check that out. Check out Zeos Pantera on Twitch. Can't, can't miss it. Anyway, I set it up with the analog and I was like, uh, what? And I was like, maybe I'm hallucinating. Maybe I'm imagining it. So I spent the time to get the fiber optic back over here, get another splitter converter. So now I'm running coaxial digital into this and the fiber optic I brought over the Denifrips Aries because I know that. If you're going to do with the DAC, the Denifrips Aries 2, linked in the description, is probably the R2. It's got the sticker. It's got the sticker. Once it's got the sticker, it means something. I hooked up the Denifrips Aries 2 to that via XLR balanced. I hooked up that via coaxial digital and I can switch between the two. And as of yesterday, the difference was blatant enough for me to use it in the sound demo. I sound demoed these yesterday and I actually switched between it. And it's like, here, let me describe the sound problems I have with these speakers. They hurt after a while. They were the most fatiguing. And it wasn't just sheer volume, it was something else. It was like, oh, God, it was like, now that I'm able to switch between the balanced input and the coaxial input, so wait, here's the balanced input and here's the coaxial input. Once I can actually go back and forth and just switch, 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 I was able to sort of determine what it was yesterday. And it was basically, it sounded like internally, because I, I have an advanced pair of these. These went on sale and I got a set like a, a couple weeks beforehand. So I can't, I have to contact Swan still, they're China and they're hard to get. But I'm gonna be like, hey, did I get a set that has older firmware? Because it sounds like you have about a four decibel over zero bump in your digital to digital conversion. It just sounded distorted. Only like here. Like it's like this speaker was just giving me the heebie jeebies to the point where I was like, can I listen to it really quietly? Maybe it's good for movies. Give me something, Swan. So I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't use them. And so yesterday when I switched over to the fucking analog input and it was like, oh my God, <gasps> they sound great. I had to go and like completely erase that thought from my head. Last night I shut off everything. I go to sleep. I'm going to get up bright and early today and I'm going to do the review, the re-review of these. I'm going to listen for another hour or so. And here's the thing. I turn them on. I don't usually turn things off. Like it's just, it's on. It's, it's not, there's no heat being generated if there's nothing playing because they're all efficient amplifiers. I turned them off last night, turned them on today, and I'm having a hard time telling the Denifrips Aries from the digital input. Fuck! Just like, what are you doing to me? You're killing my soul, Swan! Because I came to tears yesterday using this setup with the, with the Aries. And today, I would probably come to tears with either the coax or digital input or the Aries. And I could hear the difference between it going through an analog process to convert it to digital and the straight digital process. The width, the depth changes just slightly. But neither one's bad. So... Let me just cut to the quick because these videos are all too long and the algorithm hates me. These are one of the best speakers available when they're right. The, 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 these are probably gonna be consistently better for most speakers and rooms. These, you need more space, so much more space. Do not pull up a fucking seat four feet from that because as I'm playing with the volume, it's like a subconscious issue. I just keep making it louder and louder and louder and louder until I shut it off or the song stops and I realized, oh, I, I, I might have been playing those too loud because there's just ringing in my ears. It actually actually got to the ringing. But I know when I'm listening to shit too loud, like if you walk into a club and it's like, oh, need to fashion some fucking earplugs out of paper, which I've done. Wet paper, wet napkin, just roll that shit up, shove it in your ears, saves your fucking life. If you enjoy music, 
Do not go to a club without earplugs. I don't give a shit how uncool you look. Just pretend you're, you're scratching your ear and shove a fucking piece of tissue in there. Trust me. You'll thank yourself in 10, 12, 15, 20 years. I know too many people who used to love music that didn't do that, went to clubs, and now they're like, hey, man, you want to go to the thing? I'm like, why are you yelling? I'm like, I'm not yelling. Like, You're fucking yelling. Hey, listen to these speakers. Ah, they sound all right. They're all fucking deaf. Protect your ears. Zios, link to earplugs in the description. I should be doing that. Every I, I want to get sponsored by an earplug thing. Actually, Comply makes good earplugs. Comply, Edematic, literally rolled up paper in your ear. Anything to stop that sound from hitting 120 decibels in your head. These feel like I'm at a club. Every time I turn them up. And they're not... The, the biggest problem, the biggest flaw with these speakers, because I am I just said it already, they sound fucking immaculate. They balance beautifully. Once you have either this going or the, the thing that decides to not freak out, there is a balance and a power behind these that is unmatched, except for something like the A700. Because once you're DSP correcting that 8-inch, if you're like, I want 12 hertz, it's going to fucking try. Because a normal passive speaker... As much as that crossover matters, it can't force it to try harder. It just takes whatever power goes into it and does its thing. A self-powered speaker, a DSP corrected speaker, it gets the signal, it knows what it has to do, and the digital signal processor can literally force that speaker to do that. It's the future of audio is DSP corrected speakers. I mean, I had a pretty wonderful time with the, the S300s and the LA90, but in five years, that combo, that sort of quality of amplification is just going to be built into speakers. It's just going to trickle down and into the things. I'm sure the LA90 has a better amp in it than these swans do. I'm sure the LA90 has a better amp in it than those boot carts do. But as soon as that amplification tech is broken down and put into like seven different channels or fucking three different, actually six different channels for that thing, then it's over. Then amplifiers and separates are over. This is a wonderful example. I'm gonna get to something that's bassy. I'm just gonna skip tracks here. One, two, three, four. That's not even a bassy track. That's Billy Joel's Money or Love, the demo that's never been released. And it just starts with like... The, the, the bass hits on that are so natural sounding. I'm gonna put it into the balance mode. That was in the uh, Coax of Digital. Let's just keep going back and forth. Same one. Just do it again now. Off the dinner frips. It sounds better on the dinner frips now. It's been on for long enough now that maybe it's starting to balance out, or maybe just the fact that the dinner frips Aries is an actual DAC that sounds different and it's feeding it. Uh, the biggest problem I would have is telling you guys, oh, run out and spend seventeen hundred dollars in these speakers. They were eighteen hundred, by the way, in the first review, so they dropped a hundred dollars. There's one left on Amazon. You fucks. They better be in stock on Amazon. I've done this too many times with Swan where it's like, hey, I just finished your review, but there's none on Amazon and they'll not be in stock for six months. Fuck. These speakers properly placed. I'm on the Canto SX26 $400 speaker stands with the adjustment. You could adjust them with a the fucking key to level them out and they're just sitting here as far back as I can go and I wish, just, I want to keep pushing, push the fucking couch. Why won't these things move? Move. I don't need you to hold the house up today. I need to be further away from these speakers in this space. Th these sound... How's Moving Castle? See right there? Too much. Too much volume. Gotta lower it. I keep raising the volume and I keep hitting play and then there's like, oh, someone's plucking strings and this is a lot to deliver that to you. And it's like, I want to back away. Not as bad as the M500. I could still tolerate them. But it's like, I just, they need to be quieter. I'm actually going to turn the treble knob down a little bit. I'll put the bass knob all the way up and the treble knob leave at noon. And we'll see if that goes. Because there's a, I've been just tweaking them. I just want them to work better in this space. Because they have the potential to be the best speaker. Sans that. But... That potential is there, and it bothers me that I can't reach it. Just reach out and grab it. Ah! Now that sounds like yesterday. That's psychopaths, wake-up syndrome. Makeup syndrome? Uh. Jazz for Japan. More Billy Joel. 
Little Wayne. Oh, the speakers fucking move. They make me want to dance, and then they make me want to fucking cower in fear. I was watching... I watched a movie the other day. I actually watched a bunch of TV shows. And the, the, uh, the Old Man, which is a show on FX apparently, great, great show. I didn't even think we could get there with what characters we did at their age, but we got there. Um, TV movies, perfect. B le easily buy just these. By the way, the box that these ship in is a single 106 pound box. So be prepared for that. To, if you get delivered and you're in like a third floor walk up, you're gonna get a 106 pound box. Um, if you're gonna do a theater, a home theater that isn't a surround sound home theater, if you just want the simplest sound bar, oh, Meg, I'm assuming your wife's name is Meg. Meg, we're gonna go get a sound bar for the television. Mm -hmm. Make sure it's a shiny plastic one that's only this thick. Some of those sound bars are like a thousand dollars. The Bose ones, the Sonos ones, they all cost money. And if you were to somehow spend eighteen hundred or seventeen hundred dollars on a sound bar, and you didn't buy just these and just plop them down on granny's old rocking chair instead, you're a fucking idiot. Because the cinematic experience of being pressured, just 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 sound pressured to basically a comatose state with these can provide is just unreal. The music aspect of them, which is what I usually love Swan for. Ooh. See, I'm going to volume up again. I want to volume up again, Tower of God. I, I just, every time the Tower of God soundtrack comes on, I just go, where is the song? Where is it? Rachel, great character, wonderful little girl. Love, love, love every scene with her in it in Tower of God. She's my hero. Um, listen to it, listen to how lovely her theme is. It's, love, it's a lovely, it's lovely. It sounds fucking lovely. They went from sounding eh to nice, going to an analog output. Now, if I switch back to coaxial just because I can, because I don't know if it's broken yet, we can go from the to this part of Rachel's theme where she's like, it's great, it's great. Hold on, let me mute this. And then what happens is, that is dumb. That is the dumbest thing I've ever heard come out of a bookshelf because I don't know of any bookshelf that'll hold 46 pound microwave ovens. It's a microwave oven. It's a small microwave oven like for a dorm. Take your microwave in your kitchen. Don't tell your, don't tell your significant other. Just take it out of the kitchen, stand it up on its side and put it in your living room. And if that bothers you, now imagine two of them. But now imagine two of them just playing like... These are a cinematic experience in a box, more so than a music experience. I've, I've, I find with songs that get a little bit too shouty, a little bit too up there, they just get uncomfortable unless you're so far away. But with, me, with movies, with TV shows, with anything explosions in it, this might be the best scenario. This might be the best scenario for you. And honestly, under two, if you, how much have you spent on your TV? Ready, raise your hand. Raise your hand if you spent around $2,000 on your television because you got an OLED or a really big, like 80 inch. If you spent anywhere near that much on the visuals, spend it on the audio aspect of it because uh, shit's worth it. That's why, because no one does that anymore. That's so dumb. If you lower it down, when I lower these down to like a, a quiet volume, they they sort of lose that get up and go. That was the one thing I was talking about or I was trying to bring up earlier, is good DSP corrected speakers when they're properly done, they know where their volume level is, like they know they're at 12% volume. And they will actually adjust their frequency response to keep everything balanced. To keep the, the, the best example out of those speakers down there, which I don't know why they live there and not on the shelf or in here, those are the um, Mackie MR624s, six inch self-powered uh, self studio monitor. And for some reason, the DSP in that, because there's always gonna, they could either use a regular crossover or a digital crossover. For some reason the DSP in that knows it's playing quietly and just ramps everything up perfectly so that it always sounds like a full bodied signal. It doesn't sound like you're missing something. Usually with a passive speaker, 
if you don't have enough power going to it, you're not going to activate the drivers to get the box to move, to get the ports to, to, to do the right thing, to get the tuning right. There's a perfect volume for every speaker. And on a digital speaker like this, there's the capability to make it so that if you're playing it at 19 decibels, or let's say 40 decibels below maximum zero, it can know it's playing there, it knows the signal is coming and go, hold on, we're going to adjust to this shape of the frequency response to bring that low end up so that it continues to be heard, even though you're playing it quietly. And I didn't do it with this, which is why I keep going up. I keep playing things and then going up louder and louder and louder because every time I make it real fucking loud, it's perfect. And then I go deaf. So I, 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 I read to this video and I wasn't gonna give it like the full, hey everybody, this is the greatest speaker in existence. It's got its problems. My set certainly has its unique problems with whatever the fuck's happening with the, let's see, I'm gonna go to the balanced input, unmute it and go back to the balanced input, put in some Mac Miller. <sighs> they just, if you're willing to put on a decent external DAC, buy these without hesitation. If you wanna try them with just a fiber optic output, I'm gonna contact Swan and see like, hey, was this my pair? Can you do a check? Does it change though? If it's just my pair, then buy without hesitation. If it is not just my pair, then you gotta be like, all right. I can't just dump like yes and love at this because it, it gave me some problems. The problems is not the look. The problems is you need speaker stands that'll hold it. And you need someone who's a significant other that's gonna be like, yeah, that's fine. It's more than two remotes deep. Jesus. So yeah, that's my review of these. I don't wanna just, I don't wanna ramble more on and on. I just wanna get this review in the fucking can. I love you speakers. You do a great job most of the time. And depending on what my input is and depending on what the source is. Let's go back to just sitting down. Uh, Linsol needs to start selling me speakers. I think that's what it comes down to. It, it's more volume for, for Nine Inch Nails down in it. Yeah, these speakers, if you see them and you want them, you're going to buy them. If they're on sale at Amazon at all, because God knows if they are or aren't, you buy them. It's another reason I use the Linsol sponsorship here, because there's a good chance these will just evap evaporate from the world. I got goo on it. And then you won't be able to buy them for another six months. So yeah, thank you to Swan for sending these out. Cause they're just like, here, take this and the little baby M110s, uh, M10s. I'm like, great, that's a perfect balance. So these, I'll contact Swan and see what's going on. Thank you to Linsol, our sponsor for today's video. Uh, go there, check out their sales. I'll link directly to their sales page and maybe the seven Hertz timeless, if that's still on sale. Cause those sales usually flip over every few days. So you gotta keep on it. Um, don't forget to check out the second channel where I have a bunch of stuff going on. Uh, the big yard sale, the big yard sale, like the once a year, maybe once every two years yard sales coming up in August, 2022. And uh, the MPV codec, which I just, I'm astonished by it because it means I can just go and put anything I want. What are the odds of being another one of these videos? It's pretty amazing that it just it can play. I, I, I get to do that now. And it plays it with, well, it doesn't do replay gain. I have a, a replay gain plugin that's analyzing it as I'm playing. It's all whatever. Point is, Patreon and Subscribestar help pay my fucking rent, thank God, and will help me hire contractors to fix shit down here. Uh, you want to see reviews early and participate in yard sales, the big one, and listen to lost of sound demos, like the ones for these, $5 a month on Patreon and Subscribestar does that. $10 a month gets you in the private behind the scenes Telegram chat where you can talk to me directly. You also, once you're in that, you get into a lifetime swap meet chat for buying, selling, and trading gear. In fact, the uh, $10 chat has been just getting my voice clips of me complaining about these speakers or praising them or fucking being angry at them. So if you want to know what's going on before it's going on, you want to be in there. And check out Haifa Guides and the Haifa Guides forums. And don't forget to check out the merch if it's still out there. I know we're swapping out to new merch soon. Anyway, thanks all for stopping by to do that thing that you do on YouTube. I don't want to say it. I'm allergic to it. And we're moving on.